Father, we thank Thee for all Your goodness. Lord, pray we may truly understand these things. Some of them we may have seen before, but somehow it didn't make a difference. Help us. Help us to see the importance, not only in doing, but in becoming. Help us. Amen. We begin with uh, Acts of the Apostles, 482 and 483. God wishes us to have a mastery over ourselves. We are not able to bring the purposes and desires and inclinations into harmony with the other God. But if we are willing to be made willing, the Savior will accomplish this for us, casting down imaginations and every high thing that which exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, is this statement accurate? Does this statement reflect what really happens in the life? Well, it says the Savior will accomplish this for us. It says the Savior will do this. We won't do it, but he can get it done. Now, there's something wrong if he hasn't done it for us because he has promised to do it. And uh, she finishes this paragraph with bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if every thought is not brought to the obedience of Christ, there's something wrong. We ought to understand that. Because if we don't, we're never going to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we begin with that statement. It's a powerful statement. If we're not living with these words happening in our life, we ought to stop and figure out what is going wrong. Letter 135, 1898. The Spirit of God does not propose to do our part, either in the willing or the doing. <laughs> That's our part, to will and to do. As soon as we incline our will to harmonize with God's will, the grace of Christ stands ready to cooperate with the human agent. But it will not be the substitute to do our work independent of our resolving and decidedly acting. We must decidedly act. We must do. So, so it says that Christ stands ready to cooperate with the human agent. We read Prophets and Kings 486. While God was working in Daniel and his companions to will and to do of his good pleasure, they were working out their own salvation. Herein is revealed the outworking of the divine principle of cooperation, without which no true success can be attained. Human effort avails nothing without divine power. And without human endeavor, divine effort is with many of no avail. 
to make God's grace our own, we must act our part. His grace is given to work in us, to will and to do, but never as a substitute for our efforts. I read quite a bit there. I don't want to go back over it. But I would just like us to see that last little part that it says. His grace is given to work in us to will and to do, but never as a substitute for our efforts. So that means he says his grace to work in us. If we, first of all, decide to do and to will. If we decide to do those things, then we get grace to do the part that we can't do. I hope these things will strike him. He never does something against our will. 2T, 265. The mind must be educated and disciplined to love purity. Now, that's the only part we need to do it. It must love purity. To G188, some need to discipline the mind by exercise. They should force it to think. Efforts must be made by every individual to educate the mind. So if we just think about that, if we don't make the effort to educate our mind, it won't be able to take anything that God does. We must educate the mind. This one we should memorize. Patriarchs and Prophets 248. In order to receive God's help, man must realize his weakness and deficiency. He must apply his own mind to the great change to be wrought in himself. He must be aroused to earnest and persevering prayer and effort. Wrong habits and customs must be shaken off. And we're the ones to do the shaking off. God does his part, but only when we do our part. And it is only by determined endeavor to correct these errors and conform to right principles, and the victory can be gained. Many never attain to the position that they might occupy because they wait for God to do for them that which he has given them power to do for themselves. Now, I'm sure if people stop to think about that little part of the sentence, he has already given them power to do that. How come nothing happens? All who are fitting for themselves must be trained by the severest mental and moral discipline, and God will assist them by uniting divine power with human effort. So it seems that there's something that hasn't been said in these sentences. If you will read each of these sentences carefully, you'll see that man must do his part first. Then God will do his part. Our high calling, 265, it is our duty to train and discipline the body 
We are not to pamper the appetite. The sacred temple of the body must be kept pure and uncontaminated that God's Holy Spirit may dwell therein. May again, if you look at that, you'll see the event as his part first. Then Jesus will give his spirit. 3T 378 you must then answer your own prayer as far as possible by resisting temptation and leave that which you cannot do for themselves, for yourselves, for Jesus to do for you. Again, in a sense, we must do our part first, then he will do his part. He will give his spirit, his Holy Spirit. 2T 189, the reason it is so difficult for men and women to live religious lives is because they do not exercise the mind unto godliness. It is trained to run in the opposite direction unless the mind is constantly exercised in obtaining spiritual knowledge and in seeking to understand the mystery of godliness, it is incapable of appreciating eternal things because it has no experience in that direction. This is the reason why nearly all Consider it uphill business to serve the Lord. So this is not a simple little problem to overcome. She says, nearly all. Well, that takes in a lot of people. It says if they consider it an uphill business to serve the Lord, that's why they don't have any experience in it. Ministry of Healing, page 452. The struggle for conquest over self, for holiness in heaven, is a lifelong struggle. Without continual effort and constant activity, there can be no advancement in the divine life, no attainment of the victor's crown. Acts of the Apostles 5.31 God calls upon us to reach the standard of perfection and places before us the example of Christ's character. In his humanity, perfected by a life of constant resistance of evil, the Savior showed that through cooperation with divinity, human beings may in this life attain to perfection of character. And we need to stop right there because she says, the Savior showed in his humanity perfected by a life of constant resistance of evil. The Savior showed that through cooperation with divinity, human beings may in this life attain to perfection of character. This is God's assurance to us that we may too may attain complete victory. So Jesus proved that humanity perfected by a life of constant resistance of evil. The Savior showed that through cooperation with divinity, humanities may in this life attain to perfection of character. So she says nothing about a uh, goal after he comes back. 
She says, may in this life attain to perfection of character. So the question is, why do we find people that when you ask them about perfection of character, they tell you, well, that comes after Jesus comes back. They really believe that. But that sentence doesn't say it. She never says it. She says, in this life, we may attain to perfection of character. So we have been reading her and the Bible incorrectly. We don't have it strongly in our mind. No, we are to attain perfection of character in this life. When we get that in our head, that's true. God says it through the Bible and through Ellen White. It's true. Somehow we must believe that. And when we believe it, it will begin to happen. Messages to young people, page 98. Words cannot describe the peace and the joy possessed by him who takes God at his word. Trials do not disturb him. Slights do not vex him. Self is crucified. That's also in Youth Instructor, June 26, 1902. We ought to look it up in Youth Instructor because a little, there's a little bit more information there. She says, Peace and joy possessed by him who takes God at his word. Well, God says it over and over. Why don't we have the peace? that he's promised to us. Trials do not disturb him. Now, that doesn't mean the trials have stopped, but they don't disturb him. Slides do not vex him. Self is crucified. 5 B.C. 1129 but although Christ's divine glory was for a time veiled and eclipsed by his assuming humanity, yet he did not cease to be God when he became man. The human did not take the place of the divine, nor the divine of the human. This is the mystery of godliness. The two expressions, human and divine, were in Christ closely and inseparably one, and yet they had a distinct individuality. That is a, a concept that takes some real thinking to, to try and understand it. He was distinctly God and man, Two distinct beings, but somehow they were merged to be one. We need to study that until something makes sense. Ministry of Healing, page 470. To live such a life, to exert such an influence, costs at every step effort. Self-sacrifice, discipline. It is because they do not understand this that many are so easily discouraged in the Christian life. Many who sincerely consecrate their lives to God's service are surprised and disappointed to find themselves as never before confronted by obstacles and beset by trials and perplexities. They pray for Christ's likeness of character, for a fitness for the Lord's work, and they are placed in circumstances 
that seem to call forth all the evil of their nature. Faults are revealed of which they do not even suspect the existence like Israel of old. They question if God is dealing with us, why do we all these things come upon us? It is because God is leading them that these things come upon them. Trials and obstacles of the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed condition of success. In his providence, he brings these persons into different positions and varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the, the defects which have been concealed from their own knowledge. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service. That's the part that most people don't read, that last part of it. They don't fit themselves for his service. They want to take the easy way. They just, that's what they do. But it's not because God has not told them how to get it. They need to read everything. Education 151, all in this world render true service to God, or man receive a preparatory training in the school of sorrow. The weightier the trust and the higher the service, the closer is the test and to more severe discipline. 3T93, all who are followers of Christ should deal with one another exactly as we wish the Lord to deal with us in our errors and weaknesses. For we are all erring and need his pity and forgiveness. Ministry of Healing 452, the strongest evidence of man's fall from a higher state is the fact it costs so much to return. The way of return can be gained only by hard fighting, inch by inch, hour by hour. Letter 9. 1873. We do not always consider that the sanctification we so earnestly desire and for which we pray so earnestly is brought through the truth and by the providence of God in a manner we least expect. When we look for joy, behold, there is sorrow. When we expect peace, we frequently have distrust and doubt because we find ourselves plunged into trials. We cannot avoid in these trials. We have the answers to our prayers in regard for us to be purified. The fire of affliction must kindle upon us and our will must be brought into conformity to the will of God. God sees it best to put us under a course of discipline, which is essential for us before we are fit subjects for the blessing we crave. Perfection of character can be obtained only through labor, conflict, and self-denial. He brings us into positions which are the most trying to reveal what is in our hearts to further the development of Christian graces. He will place us in circumstances which will demand increased exertion on our part 
to keep our faith in lively exercise. That's a powerful statement. It's a long one. I think we'll close with that. Our Father, we thank you that you say some of the harder statements until we've seen the easier ones. We somehow have come into the harder statements and we just pray that we're ready for them now. They have the same author, the same love is in them. That means we have ability to do these things. Help us. May we understand that to receive the help. We must first do the act. By faith, we must appeal to you through the things we do. We thank you for your goodness.